Uh, which sector do you think will see the next billion dollar open source company? I don't know, and I don't really think we need them. If you have a lot of small companies, it's more powerful and look like Drupal. There's plenty of companies about Drupal, and I don't think any one of them will be a billion dollar company, but plenty of them will be large. And uh, what impact do patents have on open source software? I hate them. <laughs> no, I mean, the difference is for copyright. To have co problems with copyright, you have to steal someone's code. To have problems with patents, you don't have to do anything. It's like a minefield. Someone can suddenly, the stuff you invented without looking at anything 10 years ago, someone can say, oh, I own that. You have to pay me. Or you have to stop using it. And uh, it's really, really, really bad. It mostly works just because people don't enforce the patents. If it would, nothing would be allowed. Because there's hundreds of thousands of software patents out there, and they're for pretty trivial stuff, a lot of them. In the early days of the MySQL project, or even later, did, you, did patents become a threat or an issue that you had to think about or deal with? We deal with them. We never got sued over one, but we got threatened uh, more than once. And we spent time in Brussels and other places and funding uh, campaigns against software patents in Europe, which were, with our help and lots of other people who put in time, uh, successful. So the so clarification of software patents didn't happen. Clarification was basically allowing them, but no one wanted to say they wanted software patterns. We just clarified a few points. And do you think the fact it was an open source project helped? Yes. I mean, we decidedly decided to take the stance like, you know, suing us would be expensive in public regard more than actual money because we couldn't afford to defend, you know, it's a big guy and there's no chance whatsoever. But it would cost them a lot to sue someone that people thought it was like idiotic panthers. Uh, what innovations in uh, database technology do you think will have the biggest impact in the next few years? Well, I think no SQL and SQL would kind of join a bit because no SQL is going back to the network database before relational databases where you code your query. Uh, which works really well if you have a simple query you're going to do a billion times, what happens in a lot of websites. For all the other queries, it's absolute hell. Uh, and relational databases, SQL databases, probably will get better to doing the non-relational stuff where you do simple queries a billion times or hundred billion or whatever. So, data joining, which, I mean, Maria Libis, but I'm involved in, have already added a number of things like Cassandra Engine, um, and dynamic columns and etc etc and the socket where you access the SQL database below SQL level or a very low SQL level. Do you think any kind of hardware innovations like SSD for example will be game changers that change the software from us that you know the speed is a, a different impact? I've got pitches for databases was written from bottom up to suit SSDs but and they're definitely going to be faster but to get them bug free and really solid and have everything implemented is a huge job. And faster is too little because, I mean, you can change the established databases to use SSDs quite efficiently. It's not hard. Uh, so I doubt to get like a new generation. It's not a big enough change. Any kind of left field innovations that you think may kind of come out of nowhere that are more obscure at the moment than NoSQL? Really, because NoSQL covers everything, which is the problem with the term. It's just not one technology, it's yeah. not ten, it's lots. So comparing NoSQL to anything is almost impossible, because they're so different. And do you see any parallels between the Drupal project and the MySQL project in kind of an open source community or...? Yeah, I mean, MySQL was a bit different, because we had one central company, and Drupal were a community with companies around it. But a lot, I think, I mean, in MySQL, most of the money made was by small companies who are using MySQL for consulting and project and building websites. I think you sell in the Drupal community, but you have lots of companies building Drupal websites. Who is the biggest? I mean, they are the baseball of the Drupal community. It's not the big guys. And is there any advice that you'd give the kind of the the open source Drupal as an open source project to kind of ensure kind of innovation and growth, whether that's from an engagement community perspective or a well, I think that. that Drupal thing with not being backward compatible, which is an absolute pain for people who need to upgrade, but it also ensures innovation. Because 
if you have to be backup compatible for a very long time, what you can do, not what you want to do or, or have the resources to do, what you can do gets more and more limited for each step. And this having a Drupal doesn't have to be backward compatible allows for more innovation, I would say, which is, I think, what Drupal is where it is. Yeah. Do you see, from a community perspective, did you kind of see different pains because MySQL was more centrally developed than perhaps the Drupal community has as it's grown and more kind of money is coming the investment in community? The core of MySQL was central developed, but like uh, all the language interfaces, all the tools, all the stuff around was developed by lots and lots and lots of different people. And when people say we use MySQL, we use the core and all those other things. So it's not that central if you count the whole thing. No, great, thank you. Can I ask two okay. questions? Can I ask two questions? Sure. First is, um, what would you do if you were doing MySQL from the beginning again? What would you do differently? I've probably done this part of the legal stuff different. Like we're just mm. like having one company, we had it spread out. But otherwise, I think, at beginning of 2000 something, we went, I'm not even sure I would do this, but it would be interesting to think about. We developed MySQL, what people asked for, which central things, store procedures, triggers, views, stuff that database had for decades at that point. But almost no website they've used. An alternative was to have developed it for the web users, which would mean lots of simple queries, faster, oh, no, no, let's go out. <laughs> so if we would develop that way, the big rush of no West Girls might never have happened. The question is, we couldn't figure out to make money on it, but people paid us money, wanted different features, so it's really tricky if we would, but we basically developed things that our biggest users didn't want. But they didn't pay us money, so... <laughs> <laughs> And the last question for me would be, if there was like one piece of advice that you would give to, to an open source company at the early stages who was aiming to be anything as successful as MySQL, what would you say to them? Or maybe three pieces of advice, think, the top pieces of advice. Think through the business model. Because, I mean, you right. have to find something where you give value and take value. Because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean people are involved in the community and happy if you give them value mm -hmm. and then tend to help you but you know just talking about etc you get established but it's a very tricky business model but the even trickier business model is to compete against open source with closed source because mm. that tends to last very short <laughs> uh, if someone finds a model that works in open source they tend to kill off the closed source competitors but it's really hard to find one because there's no there's no silver bullet, there's no thing that works for everything. Dual licensing works for a few things, that you have like uh, GPL code that you own completely, so you own all the copyright on, so you can release it on another license. It works when people need to put your code into commercial code. Uh, but there's things like open core business models that I don't really like. Uh, there's not so much being used as like time delay business models where you have code that says, you know, this you can get the code, but if you use it commercially, you have to pay me. So it's non open source license, but a little thing. But in at this state, you know, four or five years in the future, this code will become GPL. I haven't seen any company doing that, and I think it would fit in a lot of places. Because you would always know that this all this is going to be GPL in a time frame. If it's too long, it doesn't work, the people will develop a parallel thing. If it's the right time frame, it might be you know, three, four, five years, I don't know. The company has time to, to get money, and then it's free. So you always have to develop. If you stop developing, you don't have value in a couple of years. Yeah, I think that could work really well for some companies, and I kind of partly wished we did that for MySQL, but we got that idea way later. Cool. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, thank, awesome. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, David. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, thank you so much.